So again, uh, good evening everyone. Uh, my name is Emil Tomaz. I work with Development Services. I'm the Deputy Director for Development Services. I know most of you, or probably all of you by now. Um, so again, welcome to tonight's uh, meeting and thank you for joining. So I guess uh, the first thing is just to go through and do roll call to see if we have enough uh, task force members uh, in attendance. <coughs> so I'll just go through the names I have. Uh, Gemma Kennedy. Here. Steve Vertig. Uh, Bianca, are you are you filling in for Steve? He has not asked me to for today. He was supposed to join. I'll text him. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you, Bianca. Patricia Duarte. Present. I guess. Uh, Colleen. I already saw you. Present. Marta, you are here. Blaine Tucker or Chad. I don't see either one of them. Don or Cindy. No. Jody, I think David, you are filling in for Jody, right? I guess that's correct. David. Jared Pena or Sergio? I saw Sergio earlier. I'm here. Hey, Sergio. Sam. Sam Aguirre. John Dosky. Here. Hey, John. John Brenneman. Hey, here. Hey, John. All right, uh, Captain Hightower, I saw you. Yes, sir. Yes, myself. Uh, Savita from City Attorney's Office, she will not make it today, but Felix is here instead. Mike Uresti, I saw you. Uh, Danny Liges, I saw you as well. Jeremy McDonald's, not here. Jenny Ramirez. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm here. Denise Hastings, I saw your name earlier. Yeah. Art Ardando. Art, you are attending, right? I saw your name. Here. Here. Hey, Art. Sam Require. I already know you are here. Here. Ashley, Daisy, David Dodson, Anissa Shell. I saw Anissa earlier. Hello. Steve Peterson, Barbara Ackman, Mike Shannon will be attending shortly. Uh, Bianca, I already know you are here. Amena, Copa Wiggins, I know you are here. Stacy Jones, here. Parker Dixon. Oh. Hey, Parker. Oh. Margaret Leeds. Bo Anderson. And uh, David Uller, I already got you. Andy Rodriguez. Christine Hill. I think I saw Christine. Hey, Christine. Renee Zamora. G uh, Gina Eisenberg. Alma Jimenez. Cynthia Spillman, Don Pavlin. I'm here. Yes. Jim, I can't pronounce your last name, so I saw you already. I'll just add you. Leticia Mejia. 
Lisa Petrix. Petrix. Yes, I'm here. Thanks, Amin. Hi, Lisa. Uh, I guess that's it. So I got everybody. Um, and I see Mike Shannon just joined as well. And I think I saw a couple. Yes, Sam. Okay. Sam Aguirre just joined. Yes, sir, Sam. Thank you. Sorry about that. No, no worries. Perfect timing. Okay. Did I miss anybody? Anybody who's joining, I didn't call your name. I see Steve has joined. Steve Versteeg. All right. Welcome, Steve. And I see uh, Summer Greathouse. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, did I miss anybody? Oh, I mean, I just got a, a text from Steve. He's having trouble getting in, so he might join us shortly. He can't access the WebEx for some reason. Oh, OK. Uh, I thought he just joined. Maybe he's he's trying. He, he, yeah, he should be able to. Um, sometimes it just for whatever reason you try to connect and doesn't allow you. But uh, he should be able to to do that. Thank you, Gemma. All right. So with that said, um, again, let me just jump into um, the agenda. So basically, we, we just did the uh, roll call and just jumping into last meeting, the meeting minutes from last time. Anybody has any questions about them, concerns, comments, or are we good to go? Any of the task force members uh, can, you know, chip in and, and let us know. I guess. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Hey, um, would one of the uh, uh, district one uh, reps like Anisha or Stacy you know, want to comment on the? We had the, um, the meeting with the Councilman Bravo called like a week and a half ago. I just appreciate it. Maybe one of them might just ch chime in with uh, briefly what uh, what transpired at that meeting. John and I mean. Uh, I'll jump in on that before we get started on that. Uh, so, hey, everybody, it's Mike Shannon. Good to see everybody. Um, John, we're going to get to that. Uh, there was a couple meetings over the last week and a half uh, that's kind of going to help us move forward a little bit. So um, let, let's go through a couple items, maybe the meeting minutes first, and then we'll jump into that. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the data and the pilot program, but um, I think item number four will really jump into that because I think it'll lead us a little bit on uh, some of our next steps moving forward. Is that all right uh, to everybody? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Oh. All right. I hear some hot head nods, some thumbs up, and okay. But uh, all right, so we'll, we'll just pin that for, for a few minutes, John. Thanks. <clears throat> all right. So I guess uh, basically everybody's good with the meeting minutes. Sounds like it. All right. Um, the next item is basically going through the pilot program. Uh, let me pull that and we can go through the numbers to show you what we did last week, last weekend. Let me zoom in a little. Can everyone see it? All right, thank you. Okay, so immediately jumping into those numbers. So last weekend uh, ended basically January 30th on Sunday. Uh, we did 300, we, PD received 338 calls uh, on those three days basically. Uh, code managed to investigate and go to 116 of those, which is typical about you know 30% so far. Um, and then we actually found 11 locations that they do have violations. We referred those to PD. Uh, PD issued three citations, and then there was nine locations that uh, we couldn't uh, basically get our readings due to, again, safety reasons and things like that. 
So overall, on the right hand side, uh, you can see the total so far. So in 15 weekends, uh, PD received on those three days or three nights, uh, 5,541 calls. We investigated 2,017 of those. 240 of them, they had uh, violations and they were referred to PD. 126 citations were issued. 110 locations we were not able to uh, get our readings. So again, it seems the numbers every weekend are roughly within the same percentage. Uh, all these numbers are kind of lining up so far. Uh, so again, we, we did about 37% of the calls we received from PD uh, and about 65% of those uh, that they are in violation are residential, 31% are business and 4% river walk, which mainly river walk is business, but we always separated those just to make sure we know the location. <clears throat> and stop me at any time if you have any questions. So again, we, we broke those 200, uh, 240 citations or violations that we found. And we have them by district, residential or business or river walk. So again, that's just the breakdown of what I just went through, the 65% residential, 31 business and 4% river walk. This is kind of the breakdown per district. <clears throat> and uh, this is again the number of citations issued per district as well. The 126 citations that I just mentioned earlier, this is broken down by specifically each district and uh, what type of business or residential is that. Uh, so again, just the breakdown of the information I provided above. We added this time uh, this table here um, again without identifying exactly the names of the businesses or the address of the residential property. But we just picked basically uh, the district that they had the highest repeat offenders. So, for example, in district one, we have 12 repeat offenders. We have 12 addresses that they are popping up more often than others. Those 12 locations, uh, they got 32 citations basically issued to them. Uh, code enforcement, as we talked about every time, code enforcement uh, referred 40 of those to PD, but 32 of them, they received physically received citations. And again, we are not breaking it down to exactly who those locations are or businesses or addresses for houses. Again, we are just trying to give you some idea of, of what's going on. District 2, there is three repeat offenders, six referrals to PD, two citations, and so forth. Um, again, you can see some districts are not listed because we did not get repeat offenders in those districts. So District 3, uh, 8, 9, and 10, we did not get the same address uh, multiple times, so we did not list those. But you can tell from just these uh, repeat offenders, those are a lot of citations already, about 37 citations uh, basically within those uh, repeat offenders. So again, this is just a small summary uh, to, to provide that to you guys and uh, to show you where the majority of the citations uh, and uh, where the majority of the repeat offenders are, which district. I mean, can you go to the chart right above that? Yeah, that one. Yes, ma'am. So again, this one is uh, the citations that have been issued to again residential or business or river walk locations within the fifteen uh, weekends that we managed to uh, basically investigate. So what we're saying is out of district one, the 68 citations, 32 were to repeat offenders. 32 of them were re repeat offenders. Yes. Yes, Gemma, that is accurate. So basically half of the citations in district one are given to uh, 12 repeat offenders, basically. 
12 locations received 32 citations out of the 68 that have been issued so far. And in District 5, they had 25 citations. That's been one of the highest, but they didn't have a lot of repeat offenders. Yes, just one, one, one location came multiple times, basically. Uh, but the other ones were just one time, uh, I guess, offender, if you will. So no, that's 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 definitely good, Gemma. That that's the reason why we put this is to start analyzing the data a little bit um, and trying to figure out where, again, the repeat offenders are, and um, out of those 126 citations, where are the majority of those citations going to? And can you tell us roughly the percentage of those repeat offenders that are residential versus business? Uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, uh, Jenny, you can jump in if you have that information, but just based on the comment here, it says 65% of citations issued to businesses were to repeat offenders. Uh, I don't have in front of me the breakdown of basically all these repeat offenders, how much of those are businesses compared to residential. Jenny, do you do you know that or do you have that handy? Yes, yeah, sir. So the uh, this table is actually representing just businesses. It was pulling just businesses. Um, our repeat okay. offenders. I think we only had two residential properties that were falling into the repeat offender, so they didn't even really fall into the list. Um, majority of these were two or more locations, so we it was just the businesses at this point. Thank you. Okay. Thank yes, you. Sir. Yes, sir. Great question, Colleen. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other questions about this data? Uh, this is John Doska. I'd actually like to thank you guys. Um, this is, I think, additional helpful information, um, you know, as we continue to work through it. Um, there have been requests for analysis, um, and so I think this is really helpful. So I wanted to say uh, thank you to everybody. Um, a a follow-on question would be, if this is 37% of the calls, that means 63% of the calls were not investigated. Um, and so I guess a follow-on question, just in terms of, again, answering how big a deal this is to people, um, if that 63% um, has re similar repeat calls for one, one uh, noise complaint, uh, or if it's a smattering, um, and in terms of for future use, trying to triage responses, if there are three or four calls to a given noise complaint, um, versus if you're just going first through the gate investigating and then letting the similar timed ones lapse without investigation uh, would, would be helpful just trying to steer the police and or whomever's going to be enforcing um, to be potentially more effective. Absolutely. Uh, great comment, John. I really appreciate that. And uh, just to let you know, the next item basically is to give you and show you a little bit more detailed information. Uh, so hopefully, again, that additional information we're going to provide hopefully will answer some of your questions. Uh, not completely everything you just talked about, but it will give you a little bit, not just you, the whole team here, uh, give you a little bit more idea of, you know, what's happening and where, where we stand. So if there's no, I'm sorry. I, have a question. I was just going to ask, can we also pour over these statistics somewhere at a website? Is it open to the public or is it just here that during our meeting that we're having access to this excellent statistics? Thank you again. Also. Thank you, Marta. Yes, uh, this information, this exact report is basically on our website. Uh, okay. So whatever we show you in the meetings actually is posted uh, online at the same location on DSD website. So it's open to the public. Uh, as I said, the more detailed information we haven't yet posted online. I know some members talked about they want all the information online um, and some of the task force members said no. 
Uh, that will be again the next item we're going to talk about. Go through some details, show you what we have, and then I guess the decision would be made on what do we want to do with that data. Do we want to put it online or not? But right now, this these summary reports are basically posted online on a weekly basis. Thank you. Thank you, Marta. All right. Uh, I mean, there's, no there's a couple of uh, questions in the chat. Um, just oh, sorry. Um, I think uh, Don's got a couple of questions. We, we might we might get into that here in a little bit. Uh, but Don, just I see your comments. Why were the public? Why I'm sorry. Why we the public are not entitled to know who the repeat offenders are? We're going to have a conversation about that, Don. So hang tight. We'll get to that. Uh, why I think Parker has a question. Um, uh, why the gap in violations and citations, Parker? We've had a conversation about that a little bit over the past several months. Um, we can we can certainly go over that again. Um, you know the process right now. Certainly, just to remind everyone, is um, these these three nights that the data that we're sharing with you are the three night shifts, right? They're just a snapshot of the week. The last is it 15 weeks? I mean, is that where we're at? Yes. Yeah. Weeks. Since Oct since October 7th, um, the code officers are assigned to to do this 100 uh, percent. Uh, to be the, the first responders, if you will, uh, to get to as many as they can. Uh, that's why we're, we're getting to about 30% of them, um, maybe a little, little over 30% of them now, uh, not quite 50%, but we get to about 30% of those calls, 40% of those calls, uh, as shown on the report. Um, if there's a violation, meaning a noise level higher than what's prescribed in today's current code, we then uh, request SAPD to uh, to come back shortly thereafter and issue a citation. So uh, that that has some benefits and some challenges uh, that this group has talked about. Uh, some efficiencies, some inefficiencies. Uh, but um, you know, Parker, we've had that. I, I think we've talked about it a little bit. I, so I don't want to go too much more into it. But if you had a specific question about that, um, maybe we can tackle that, or we can talk more about that uh, in a little bit on another agenda item. What do you think? Uh, I just, it was, it's more so just specifically um, he's not able to get out there to issue the citation. I'm not talking about triaging the calls all to get overall. I'm just talking about specifically a violation and why they're not able to get there to issue the citation. Sure. Okay. Well, let's, um, Parker, let's, let's leave that a little bit towards, I think it's going to be part of us moving forward, that conversation about how we move forward and how we address that, right? How do we address, um, you know, uh, calls that we receive as a city, no matter who it is and how we respond, if there's a decibel reading or one other uh, potential violation of the ordinance. Um, let, let's, can we just put a hold on that for, for, for a little bit as we, as we get a little bit further into these, uh, the data that we're going to share. Okay. Okay. So, I, I mean, I, I think I'm going to, I'm going to just, I'm going to dive. In. I'm going to take over a little bit. I'm going to share uh, my screen a little bit uh, because before we get into the details, I wanted to let everybody know the noise, you know, we, we're doing this, um, you know, we're doing two things all at once, right? They're kind of the same, but we're doing the current pilot program, which is, the, the alternate enforcement of the current ordinance. We also have this charge as the task force is to see what we need to do, if anything, with the current ord ordinance to modify policies, procedures, et cetera. So even though they're overlapping, we all know why they're a little bit separate. So let's just continue to look at this for um, a, a few minutes. Overall, this summary, uh, we're still seeing about the same uh, information, right? Code enforcement is getting to uh, about, again, uh, 30 to 40 percent of the calls that, that, that are coming in those times, which is Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights. Only uh, a little over 10 percent of those calls, uh, we find a violation, meaning a noise level reading that's higher than what's prescribed in the code. So uh, we can take that. I mean, we're going to ask this task force to, to, to try to understand and, and, and make some uh, determinations as to what that means. Does that mean? 90% of the time, the calls are they're just not violations, uh, and only 10%, or is it just maybe it's the 30 minutes or so that it's taking to get out to that call, the noise goes down. Uh, there's a lot of information that we can glean from that. 
Uh, certainly, I talked about already that the handoff uh, policy that we have right now with code and, and, and SAPD, uh, there's, some, there's some reasons why uh, only about 50% of the violations that we find as a code enforcement officer are, are then able to be issued a, a citation. Some are choosing not to, some are uh, just can't, uh, just challenging. Um, so those are some of the stats we can glean from that. Uh, I think this group has, has talked about it before. Uh, of the violations that we're finding, uh, two thirds are residential, a third are, are businesses. Uh, that hasn't changed much since the first month or so. Uh, I mean, and Jenny, is that right? I mean, I know we can go back to the data, but that's held pretty yes. pretty close to um, uh, what we have seen. Is that is that about right? Yes, sir. That's correct. It hasn't swayed any extreme mm -hmm. up or down. Yeah, this this kind of two thirds, one third. Uh, uh, and again, I, I I don't know if 2,000 data points is enough to, I mean, we're going to have probably another 1,000 or so uh, in the next couple months, but uh, just something for that to watch, uh, you know, a few percentage on river walks. Uh, and then, of course, we can, you can, we can talk about the, 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 the cases and, and the districts, et cetera. So these are the summary items, and it's something we're going to continue along. Some of you have asked me recently about the, the pilot program we are intending to go uh, right up until April, right, with this um, this enforcement three nights a week with these additional code officers. So we'll keep posting this. And um, But what I also want to talk about and, and get into next is uh, some of you are asking about data. Like, where is the data behind those numbers? And I'm going to, I'm sharing it. Can everybody still see my screen? Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Okay. Um, so here's the data, and it's it's as, it's as simple as this. Um, I think we just showed you there's 5,500 calls that we've tracked uh, during those uh, three evenings times 15 weekends. Um, and so here's a spreadsheet of essentially 5,500 uh, calls. And uh, this is actually taking a little bit from SAPD's data set which is uh, you get an incident number, and I'm just going to walk through this very quickly, and then I want, I want to uh, answer some questions and ask you all some questions from the task force. Um, we, we have case numbers. Case number just means is it was a case hey, issued on that call. Yeah. Yes? Mike, it's still on the, um, the Word, Word document. Oh, it is. Showing. I'm sorry. Let, me, let yeah. me see if I can. That's okay. Let me see if that, uh, that, that went. Is that, is that better or not? No. Okay, yeah, sure. I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to share. Let me see if that worked. Did that work? Yes. yes. All right. Um, Thank you. I see. Yeah. Thank you for jumping in before I get to the end of my 15 minute uh, spiel on this. Please interrupt me anytime. Uh, so anyway, so you should see a list here. It's it's 5,500 um, and, and 40, uh, I think it's 50, 5,541 um, records. That should match up what we have. These are just the calls we've received in that time frame that we just showed you the summary. Um, we have uh, whether or not a case number was uh, issued or not. Uh, if you filter, you know, it's just an Excel spreadsheet, you can filter. Uh, there have been some questions uh, in some of the meetings about which um, uh, substation these are being routed from or to, right? Mm -hmm. um, so th there's a column there. We have time pickups, days of the weeks, hours. These are all uh, disturbance kind of loud music calls, if you will. That's how they're entered when they're called into um, SAPD. That doesn't mean that when we get out there, it's actually loud music or disturbance. Um, but uh, there's location names if we have a location. Uh, we have addresses for each call. Uh, and then if there's an apartment, an apartment number. So uh, what I'm saying is here's a spreadsheet um, that we, you can, we can sift. This is just sorted. We started on uh, 10 7, and let me do this. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Does that help everybody? I don't know if that does. Um, and again, as you can keep scrolling down, and there's, like I said, 5,500 lines of data. There's another spreadsheet, which is a subset of that, which is the 2,000, um, uh, the 2000, uh, 2000 calls that actually went to, of those 5,500 calls, 2,000 of them went to code. So we have a spreadsheet here. And we just added some things like week one through 15, uh, dates, the call source the, and stuff, addresses, zip codes, council district. We add things like residential or business, right? 
uh, actually it's residential, business, industrial, or river walk are the categories there. Uh, the location, um, if it's a business, right? Same thing we, we looked at on the other side. Was the location in violation? Again, 90% um, of them are gonna be no, 10% uh, of them are yes. And then there's some that we referred back to SAPD um, for the safety reasons that I mean talked about. So that's just how we categorize it. So if I were to filter that, uh, unsafe to take reading, gathering in front yard, we sent back to SAPD. Uh, again, we've had that conversation. And then, uh, let me see here. We, we do actually record if there is a violation, whether there's a DB measurement taken or not. Um, there, there's one that actually wasn't in violation, um, but we have a lot of those. Uh, we have some other notes from the officer and we have some data like time arriving and time leaving, et cetera. So we're sharing this today because many of you asked about this information. And all this shows is uh, the calls that we've received, you know, kind of dates, times, locations, et cetera. Uh, the calls that code enforcement of those 5,500 calls, which ones the code officers were able to respond to, and uh, at, least, at least that outcome. Uh, and before I stop, the last thing that I'll share is that we, we are starting to put some of this into uh, the heat map form. So can you all see a heat map now, or do I have to undo it again and redo it? Yeah, you need to undo it. I'm sure okay. All right. Thank you. I'm going to learn like this. Um, I'm sorry? That was like the chorus. <laughs> I know. Thank you. See? How's that? That's good. Okay, Ooh. so what we're showing here is now this is just one heat map of one subset of data. So we're just showing this because some of you have asked for heat maps. Others have didn't really know what the heat map was. We got a couple of questions about that. So let me just let me just set this one up. This is just the 231. Uh, and now this is this is uh, 14 weeks worth of data. This didn't include this last weekend. So the numbers are a little bit off. But these are the 231 uh, violations that code found that we would refer back to SAPD uh, and ask them to, uh, you know, do the next step and, and possibly issue a citation. OK, so again, we can do this for the and we're actually in the process of doing this for the 5500 calls. For the 2000 calls that code was able to get to uh, and then heat mapping, you know, which ones were in violations, which ones weren't. Uh, and then showing where we where we where we have found uh, decibel levels higher than the prescribed of today's code. So, again, this is information that we're starting uh, to produce. Uh, we this is a couple pieces. This is like one map that we have. We just wanted to show uh, because I wanted to make sure that, and we wanted to make sure that this is what the task force was looking for in order to help uh, move this process along to try to find solutions. Um, you know, to some of the challenges we've been facing and, and talking about now for six months. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing for a second, and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask the group, meaning the task force, uh, to make any comments or ask me any questions. And 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 as you do, I will pull up a spreadsheet and or a heat map if needed. Uh, but the question that we're going to ask you all uh, as a task force is, we're already posting the summary. Should we be posting these calls for service and the results in, that I just showed? I mean, it's, it's all open data anyway. Anybody can ask for it. I've said this, I think, to this group a number of times. If any of you called and asked for this information today, tomorrow, this week, uh, we, we, we're giving it to you. We give it to you. That's, the, that's just the Freedom of Information Act stuff. So um, that's kind of the question I'll ask for you, but I also want to open it up, um, you know, for any questions you have. I gave it to you very quickly, and I can put it back up on the screen. I will. Um, so it's a lot of information to digest. But I think, you know, I, I think I'll take that and open it up. And I'll use, uh, we can use the chat. Uh, someone can just chime in, use your digital hand raising. Um, or if I see your face, I see, all right, I see one. Martha uh, has already uh, waved her real uh, virtual hand. Uh, so Martha, we'll go to you first. Okay. I actually think using the data 
that you have nicely summarized into reports that is valuable is the type of information that should be posted online. And if somebody wants more, that Freedom of Information Act should be utilized so we know who asked for it. And the only reason why I really feel like that's important, you know, yes, it's all data, but <clears throat> there is a risk of profiling people who report because it actually has been reported to me. I've had individuals tell me, you know, so-and-so was profiled by a business owner and he didn't even report or make a complaint of a noise. It was another person. So we're in that world already. And I think that um, we need to just try to mitigate that kind of behavior by not making all of the information available to everybody and not really knowing then where it was, you know, farmed from. You know, whoever wants it can get it. You also, whenever someone asks for it, you would have a record of who asked for it. So, you know, I think it's, I think it just be responsible for us to minimize the risk factor of um, having people unfavorably profiled by a business that's upset for having gotten a citation. We really need to take that report of, you know, that happening very, very seriously. I mean, I don't want us to be liable for something uh, as a task force or even as a city. You know, we don't want any lawsuits of any kind for anything. So, you know, I think it's post pandemic. There's a lot of uh, businesses that are, I think, feeling the pinch and they feel like this noise citation and, and complaint might be impacting their business. There's just a lot of feel things going on and there's also people trying to get rest and they're stressed out with this pandemic. So we're dealing with, you know, different uh, warring <laughs> sides to an uh, issue. And I, I think it's just not responsible to post everything. It's public information requested if you need more. Okay. Thank you, Martha. I think that's an important point that I'd, I'd like the task force to, to, to help us with. Uh, one clarification though, Martha, I wanna make sure, what I, I, what I didn't show in that, in, in any of those lists are, are who called, like who called the call for service. And, and I would say most of those, um, I'll, I'll, we, we can go back and look, but most of those are anonymous. That's how most of those come in. Most calls for service for things like this or code enforcement a lot. Um, generally, people do it anonymous for, for a lot of the safety reasons. And, and just, and, and again, that's, that's how it was um, envisioned. Uh, that's exactly what we did when we did the EDE uh, emergency declaration enforcement about a year ago when the mask mandates and the businesses, you know, we got thousands of calls um, uh, anonymously and we did some proactive, of course, uh, but, but again, that's something I want the, the group to, to talk about and, and see if we can build some sort of consensus and, and, just, and make a decision on this. But thank you. Um, I see a couple on the chat, um, a couple posted Hello. online. I have no concerns Real about quick, posting. Mike, yeah, Mike John Latios is trying to get on and someone needs to let her in to the meeting. She's been trying for the last 15 minutes. Who's that, Don? Yeah, Latios. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, there's there's no okay. There's um, no. I mean, uh, let's see, Jenny or Mike or is Jimena on the call? Yes, she is. Okay. Yes, sir. Can one of, can one of you send her the direct link? There is no. It's just a web link that you. I mean, it's a WebEx link. There's no. There's no letting you in uh, if you have the link. Um, but we can do that. Jimena, can you uh, reach out to Don Larios, uh, one of our members? I think we have her email on the meeting invite. Okay, I'll send her the link. Get... Yeah. So, okay. Uh, any anybody want to uh, jump in? And thank you for that. If, if there's anybody else having trouble getting in, let us know. We'll try to get them connected. But this is an open WebEx. This isn't one of those. Um, you know, the host will let you in out of the. Um, waiting i think waiting rooms or something like that right um okay i see a digital hand with steve hey steve hello um so i mean i, I understand the concerns um obviously i mean we experience those kind of concerns just uh, right here in in the blocks around me when when things are going on but um you know i mean they're 
every you know you there's a website where you can go and and look at every active like 311 call um for the city i mean this, this stuff is typically available um and the 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 purpose of the freedom for information act is not to know who asked it it's because you the it it's designed around equity so that if if it isn't available everybody you can't be selective of who you give it to so the reason people request it is not so the city knows who requested it it it's for equity but um so i i don't see why all the details with you know personal information redacted that's common i've done open record requests and they say well you don't need people's personal information and i say no i don't i mean that's common the udc amendments have my address redacted when they're posted online i mean that's really so i don't see why and i want to see this all available without doing a opens records request every week yeah Thank you. Thank you, Sam. There's a quick question um, on the uh, on the chat. Can the data on the spreadsheet be sorted by council district? Yes, it's one of the columns. I, we can show you that. It's the, the data that I showed you, and, and, and certainly my experience, I mean, and Jenny and the team, when we did this with the emergency declaration enforcement team uh, through the early and, and mid stages of the pandemic, it, it was posted as a uh, as a spreadsheet that's uh, that's sortable, and and all you need to know is how to use a spreadsheet. Now, if you don't know how to use a spreadsheet, the city staff can walk anybody through that. But it's really as simple as sorting and filtering. But but uh, not only on uh, data by a council district, but any one of those other columns uh, that I um, that I shared. And I can bring that back up if we want to talk more about that. But I uh, wanted to open it up to any other questions or comments. I know there's got to be more. There's, I don't see a lot of digital hands, but I, oh, I see Gemma. Gemma's hand is on. Yeah. So uh, one, yes, I think it should be published. Number one, and number two, it, it really will answer some of the questions we had last time. And I think Bianca brought it up about a lot of the calls that are coming in don't get violations. Is it because of the density? Is it in an apartment complex where you really can't find where the noise is coming from. And it seems, it appears that the data has, if uh, they were able to monitor it, or they were called in, they didn't get a decimal read it. Was it because of the density? Was it because it was lost in a, you know, multifamily uh, apartment complex, but people can hear it? And trying to figure out, you know, you're getting so many calls. What does that mean? You know, why are people calling you? They're hearing noise from somewhere. And so maybe the state can sort of show us or or maybe Jenny can, from the experience that they're having, uh, why aren't they getting the decibel readings, but yet you're getting a lot of complaints. So I don't know if we can bring that out from that data sheet. So Gemma, let me let me jump in and answer some of your comments or questions. Um, so the first thing is we we are not doing any apartment complex uh, calls. So if if we get an address and we don't know it's an apartment complex and we show up there, we immediately defer that back to PD. Uh, again, for a lot of reasons because number one, it's hard for us to get the reading because it could be two apartments next to each other calling you know on each other basically so uh, there's really no exactly property line where we're going to get the reading between those apartments that's number one number two is the safety of the officer walking into an apartment complex and you might have 50 people partying in one apartment and again we 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 defer those back to pd nine, nine 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 out of ten we know it's apartment complex because our supervisor will take the address, plug it into uh, Google uh, Maps, and normally it pops up with the, with the name of the apartment. So we immediately defer those back to PD. Are they counted in our calls when we say we have 5,000 calls? Are those counted in the calls, even though we never go out to measure them? Because that's a large number, you know, which are apartments. So really the the calls that we can do are, are a lot less we, we don't break it out as such you know so yes 
you know what so, I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So the apartments are part of the 5,000 calls. You are correct. But they are not part of the 2017 that we went to. So, so the ones that the code enforcement responded to, they do not have apartment complex in them. Yeah, because that sort of skews the the numbers. You know, if we you know if we knew that out of that five thousand, you know, two thousand were apartment complexes. Because I'm looking at neighbor noise, and that seems to be a big one. So really, the number that we can work with is like three thousand calls. You see what the the top number is. So it's sort of skewing the data a little bit if we can. Uh, go there, you know, so if you could break so, so Gemma, Gemma, let me just, let me jump in just a little bit. And, and just so you, and, and I think, so the apartments are in that and I, can you all see my screen again? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I just took the, the list of 5,000 calls, right? And this is just a spreadsheet. So just very simply, and this is just on the fly. So don't, uh, you know, don't sign it. Don't sign anything legal with this. Right. Um, so I just did a filter on location names and, and just put a search for anything called APT or apartments. And you can see there's, there's certain apartments that came in. Um, and I have out of the 5,000, uh, if you look down, uh, there's a count of over 900, right? Um, so again, not all the residential calls that are coming in are single family dwellings. There's a lot of apartment or if you will, um, apartment, uh, maybe uh, with the unit number or something to that effect. So it's a good number. And, and yes, you can use this information to figure out how many are coming in. And I'll just unsort it now. I'll just say all again. Uh, but having this information is, is probably, at least with the task force, um, you know, being able to sort through this a little bit and, and answer some of those questions uh, either you give us the questions and we'll sort through it and bring back the information, or we're going to ask, you know, the task force to help us answer some of those questions. But, you know, I think we've shared this with the group is we, we, we are seeing a lot of calls um, for not just single, you know, we talked about two thirds being residential. Uh, a good number of those are coming out of apartments uh, and not just single family, which is, I mean, that's very natural. We have, a, we, we live in a big city with a lot of apartments and we have a lot of single family dwellings so that's probably not um not uh unheard of so quick question can i have a question so uh, uh is that Mar martha okay i'll let you jump in i don't see another digital hand right yet i'm gonna look but okay the, the we have two-third residential one-third business pretty much for the violations right so I mean, you, I heard you say, I recorded, you know, you saying that. So the two thirds residential that we're speaking of automatically excludes all of these apartments. Is that correct? It excludes all of, you know, we referred them back to SABD. So they're not a part of that two third residential statistic that we are talking about. Is that correct? I mean, and, and Alma, yes. and, I mean, I mean, and Jenny. Um, yes, that's, that's correct. That's okay. correct. Okay. So what that, what that, I mean, you can just deduce that two thirds of those are reported and plenty more in the, you know, multi dwelling, multifamily dwelling are a problem. The task force isn't just addressing uh, residential single family homes, right? I mean, we're, we're here for all of them, even though our pilot study doesn't track all of them. So. I just wanted to, you know, put that out. There. Yeah. So, Martha, yeah, you're right. As we as we move forward, you're right. I mean, yeah. As, you know, apartments said, apartments right now are excluded from code response just because of our process um, and, and how we're able to deal with apartment complexes and, and really the lack of code's ability to do so. So, you know, I think you know, based on the conversation, I see a couple other questions on apartments. Um, Maybe we can internally look at some of that and try to glean, glean some information. Um, we can, I mean, maybe we can look at with SAPD and see what we're finding in some of those apartments. Um, but, uh, but again, I'll, maybe we'll leave that as an action item uh, between now and the next meeting.
So I see a, a couple chat questions. How many apartment calls total? I did a quick down and dirty, you know, and, and I, I just, I did a search on APT apartments. So, and I, and I saw over 900 calls. Now do not quote me on that. So I, I that was just looking at a 5,000 spreadsheet very quickly. What I think we, we can do, we can, based on this apartment discussion, we can maybe grab some of that, look through it to get a, to get a re real number. Uh, it's probably not too far off, but, um, so uh, we we can take that as part of it, and um, then there's a question about how many residential properties are repeat citations. Um, uh, we, again, we'll have to look through the data and and find the answer to that question. I think. Uh, Mike, uh, just in regards to that question, how many mm -hmm. residential uh, properties are repeat citations? Uh, if we are talking about single family dwelling units, mm -hmm. from the calls that we did, it's only two addresses that they are repeat. Oh, okay. Very minimal. Okay. Okay. That's out of the two. That's out of the two hundred and forty um, citations that we've got listed so far. Two were repeat residential single family dwelling property. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Thank you. All right. So more discussion, please, on this topic. Um, see if I see your hand up. I'm going to see if there's anybody else before you jump in a second time. But uh, I don't see anyone. Hey, hey, Michael, it's Sergio. I, hey, Sergio. I'm okay, I'm okay with just the summaries. I mean, me, me personally, I don't, I mean, posting the raw data. I mean, I, I'll be honest, I don't think I'm going to go through it all. And, and you guys are doing enough work already and, and taking the time to summarize it all. I, that's sufficient for, 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 I think, should be for everyone. Because um, we trust you guys are doing the right thing, doing, doing your job and providing the information. So, I think if anybody has a specific question, then they can certainly ask you guys. But I'm okay with just the summaries you guys have been providing. Thank you, Sergio. Steve, I'm going to jump back to you. I uh, got your digital hand raised. Is that is that a, a new question or comment, or you, is that left over? No, uh, no. Well, well, it's not left over. Yeah, I was just going to. I mean, I I don't think this is a criticism that you're not doing well or and i don't think this means we don't expect you to summarize in the future it's just i think just transparency and and i guess my question is i mean what if you know when this discussion's over what what's the next step to get it posted the the data well i i mean again i i, I wanted this discussion tonight to help um help help guide that I, I mean i i clearly i don't know if everybody's going to agree all the time on everything right but you know i'm um you know I'm, I'm trying to understand you know the pros and cons we don't want to create more of a problem uh than solving more of a problem with anything we do um you know certainly you know i work for the city of san antonio and you know we have uh, over the past several years, uh, I've been here 20 years, so I'll just you say, increased our overall data transparency through things like the OpenGov portal and, and all that. I mean, so it's kind of just like what we do now. Um, so, but again, we want to do it thoughtfully. And um, yeah, that's kind of why we're having the discussion, Steve. So I don't, I don't know the exact answer to your question, like what's the exact next step, but you know, that, that's kind of where why it's an important discussion. Okay. Well, Mike, I, you know, I love data, so I love looking. It gives you more ideas when you see things, when it's in front of you. You can even mm -hmm. ask more questions. You know, if you look and you see a lot of apartments or the residential, it really sort of stimulates asking more questions about the information and uh, sure. so i know that helps me but and i think uh lately there hasn't been a lot of transparency in some things i've been involved in so i'm for more transparency okay all right is this um i i don't i look I don't want to summarize what I'm hearing, um, but I also uh, I don't want to miss the obvious. Am I getting uh, more 
of our task force members that uh, maybe re maybe represent the resident the, the the neighborhood side of the house as opposed to the business side of the house. Am I getting more of that that we want this data posted regularly? Meaning. Is enough for you? You think that's enough? I, I'm looking for some other business um, members to kind of weigh in if they're if they're still on. Um, again, I I think we've had more comments on 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 I think from the neighborhood side of it. But again, I'm trying to stay away from the sides. All here trying to find a solution. Mike, I think we, we, we lost you a little bit. I'm not sure if it's just me or everybody no, else. All right, am I, am I back now? Yeah. Yes, you are. Okay. Yeah, it's just starting um, to lag a little bit. I thought it was my internet. <laughs> all right. I'm going to have to go tell my daughters to get off Netflix. I need some bandwidth. And I'll tell them the task force told me it's it's not it's not daddy's fault. Um, all right. Any anyone want to weigh in a little bit on that, or we beat this to death, and we just need to make a decision? I see Martha waving her hand. Uh, Martha, there there might be some incentive built into having all that data available to make the businesses not want to be on the website for noise violations. I can actually see the value of making all of this public as a deterrent. Uh, that That is a possibility to you know announce, make it public that you're going to do that. That, that, might, that might be something that um, would work <laughs> on the one hand, uh, but on the other hand, you know, it, it just, like I said, I, I really have concerns ever since I, you know, even though you're confidential when you call, there's people who suspect and think that so and so reported them. That just happens because, you know, people have suspicions that they act upon that have no basis. So anyway, but uh, that it might work to also make it very public. That might be if, if, if indeed it is going to go public, uh, a, a good announcement an alert might be something that would help to work as an incentive to not make noise that disturbs your neighbors. Michael, forgive me for coming in late, but uh, I'm assuming that you all are talking about posting repeat offenders on the website, the city's website, and I just feel that that's a bad idea. You, you know, here we are supposed to be finding solutions we're supposed to be working together, residents with the business community, and I just feel this is not a solution by targeting people, posting their businesses on the website. That that's that that uh, that just would not be appropriate. And let's say more people start targeting them because it's easy to just look them up on the website. Then let's post every resident, every residential habitant that that's been cited. Uh, let's do that. Also, the people that are calling in that those repeat callers, let's post their names and their numbers. You know, I, I just, I just don't see a solution by posting businesses names. Uh, I think it's very inappropriate. Oh, did All they right. have names on that sheet? Uh, the Thank, you. Thank you. No, there. So th just to clarify, there's no, there would be no name, no personal. I mean, it, I mean, there'd be bi there's business names, address, address. addresses, and business names of where the call for service was. Not, not. I mean, I, I think I know Don. You, I know you had some trouble getting in. I apologize for that. Um, so uh, the 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 call for service doesn't include. Uh, who called it in? Most of, mostly because most of the time it's anonymous. I mean, it's a high majority of the time. These are anonymous calls that we receive. Um, and then secondly, Don, just to clarify, it's all the data, not not only. I mean, it, it's going to have those uh, 
locations that there were no violations found, that, that we have documentation of, of houses and businesses that are, that are below the limits and compliance thumbs up just even more often than we have the, we find violations. So, you know, that's, again, I don't want to, we're not, we're not proposing to target only if someone, you know, got a violation, but to your point, if you repost it, someone can glean that. So who, who got violations and who didn't? I mean, hope I'm Okay, back. so I'm sorry, Michael. Uh, so the address of the business is posted? No, it would, well, it would be a business or a residence uh, that got a call uh, to uh, the the SAPD uh, non-emergency hotline uh, during the hours that the the three nights are happening, right? That we that we're doing our pilot program. Uh, those would be in a big spreadsheet. Yeah, we showed everybody that. So I, I could I could pull it up. Um, yeah. Okay. Hey, hey, Michael and Sergio again. Uh, I agree with Don. I mean, again, like I said, I'm okay with the summaries. I think that posting the data could lead to targeting. Um, and if, if we're looking for transparency, like, you know, callers are calling anonymous and, and why not get their name? Hey, if you're calling a noise complaint on a business, Hey, let's get your name then and let's post it. Um, just like you've mentioned with the emergency declaration data set. I mean, you, you, you saw the business that were, 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 were being really shamed on because they ended up on that list and were they really in violation? Uh, I mean, I'm not sure, but someone called them and called on them and they ended up on the list. And so it could really ruin a business and damage a business if, if people really start targeting and using this as, as a way to target and, and try to shut a business down. So I think we just got to be careful with the business community um, just a, a, all across the city of, of how this can lead to targeting and really damage business. Um, this is John Burnham. Hey, um, you know, I understand your concerns, Sergio, or Don. But, you know, like I know of one business that's run off three other businesses, okay, um, and shut them down, taken over their, their areas. Um, but, but once, you know, code compliance comes out there and a business is getting multiple uh, citations, um, that, that, that's not t targeted. That, that's pretty much factual. That's not just somebody calling to harass, uh, or, you know, uh, nuisance calls or whatever. Um, code compliance officers come out there and uh, multiple times and say, hey, this business is is, is out of control. Um, and that should be, you, you know, uh, that that's that's what we're going after. Not not uh, you know, not ninety eight percent of the businesses are 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 in compliance. And and you know, um, it's like I. I you know, so yeah, we're, we're back to the, the you know the, the the bad guys or the bad apples or whatever. That you know the, the twelve in district one, the twelve, the twelve uh, repeat offenders that have thirty two citations. To me, that's where we should be focusing, not on everybody else. Yeah, I think that the twelve in, in district one is more of a dense a density issue. It's not really a a noise issue. No. I, I I can speak for a fact uh, that that may be true in in some part of the, the district, one, but I, I know one part of district one, one one that's not that's not the case. All right. Well, well look, I, I I hope I see another digital hand. Colleen, is that Colleen? Yes. yes. Um, I, I wasn't sure I heard that correctly about a density as opposed to a noise issue, but putting that aside, um, we do post all of our calls that come in for code compliance on, on the city's website. And anybody can look at any of that information on, the, on any resident, any business. Um, I don't know why we should treat this any differently. And it tells whether they're cited or not and what the status of it is. Okay, thank you, Colleen. Uh, Gemma, you had you had a, a comment. Yeah, it's you know it's 
I don't think of it as one way or another. I'm just interested in, we get a lot of calls and how this information is broken down. And are we spent, you know, spinning our wheels? Are, why do we have so many calls, but they don't get, they're not really in violation of anything. Is there a way we can sort through this? Can we really look through this information? Actually, this was a request by Don to really look at who are the repeat offenders you know, that it's sort of in the business section, but it goes across. We know district one has a lot of businesses, but you go to district five, they have a lot of neighbors. And how can we find out how to improve our noise ordinance if we're not looking at the information? And I guess I never thought of it as business versus residents. It's just the information we need to make this noise ordinance work. And if people are repeat offenders, they're repeat offenders of their neighborhoods, of their apartment building, of their businesses. So it's just data. And if you feel strongly about not taking up, I feel like it should be transparent or you could just send it to all of us. You know, we're attending, but I like to see the data. Okay. Um, all right. Well, here's, I think I want to, I want to make sure we have some time, uh, for two things. One, I want to talk about the next topic. Um, you know, I, I, this is, this is, this is my take on it, everyone. Um, you know, and, and I think that Colleen, you had a good point. We, we actually, if you go to the city's open data portal, we have, uh, service requests for animal calls, service requests for all property maintenance, service request. I mean, it's all there. The city has moved moved to that. And, you know, I see this data as uh, showing that there's a lot of uh, residences and businesses that are in compliance and following our code. And I think we need to do a better job educating, you know, all of us, including maybe some of the people that are calling it in, it may be uh, it may be a little annoying, but it's not against code, right? In terms of decibel levels or what have you. But then there's there are some uh, residences and businesses that are uh, getting shown to be in violation. Is what we've seen. This is just code office. I'm just speaking for the code officers, and I know PD's on the line. Uh, they've had violations in the past, and and they'll have some in the future as well. Um, I I don't. Well, I don't want to create a targeting environment. I don't want to create an unsafe environment for anyone. Um, I, although, but I just don't see how we can move forward without posting this this information. Again, this is just raw data, and I think it's going to be used something useful for this um, task force to be to, to 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 look at and see and what's not working, and where things aren't working. Or where there are properties that aren't working well, how do we help them? Because that's what I keep hearing is how do we help them get back into compliance or into compliance with our current code or a modified code in the future that that finds that right balance? I I just I don't know how I go against the city's open data transparency efforts over the last several years. So my, my recommendation I think you know is going to be that we we use this information appropriately. Uh, we don't use it uh, to target. Uh, but at the same time, we use it to learn what's not and, and, and how do we find those solutions for, you know, what we've been charged to do. This is a challenging item. It's not easy. If it was easy, we would have fixed it in a month. But, you know, I think we've got a group of people here that are, that are really trying to work together. And I don't, I don't care what side of, I don't want to say what side of the aisle. That sounds so... Um, you know, kind of part federal, of federal partisan politics, and I, I certainly that. But um, I, I just I can't I can't see how we wouldn't. So we're we're going to move that direction. I think as as a city, and 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 I think we need to figure out how to how to understand that data. Um, if there's anything we're missing, or, or we think is um, you know, uh, needed to be added or some context to it, that's fine. But I, I just can't see us moving forward another way. 
And uh, we've done that in the past with some other things that I've worked on, and it's 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 done more more good than than not good. And um, and I think that's how we're going to have to go. So, look, I, some of you like that information, so, and don't. And I I wish I could make everybody happy on this, but I just feel like we have to do that to move forward. We got two more months of this, and we're going to need that data to help us, you know, you know, make some make some improvements moving forward um, w with our policies, procedures, and and code or whatever. So, I think that's what I'm going to go. I've you know I appreciate everybody's comments, and I'll I'll continue the conversation after this. I got to move on to the next one, but um, I think that's how we're going to move forward. So I'm going to move forward with my team on on sharing it with the, uh, and what I'll probably do is I'll probably email it to all your task force members, but I, it's gonna be posted online in a day or two uh, in just that format and update. And you'll see how it feeds into the summary. Okay, so that 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 kind of gets us into the summary of the pilot program. And I wanna move off the pilot for a little bit. I know uh, there, we, we talked about them being two separate items, even though they overlap and, and are critical to each other. But uh, John, we're finally getting to your question from an hour ago, man. Sorry, sorry it took me so long, but I'm getting there. So uh, as many of you know, and some of you may not know, uh, we, we actually had some uh, internal meetings. Um, Councilman uh, Bravo had asked, you know, kind of a check-in from city staff and some of the task force members uh, as to, you know, what's working well, what's not working. We see, what do we, what do we see? How do we how do we keep this thing moving? But but maybe maybe this task force and our community you know moving forward a little bit. And um, I know that the question was posed a little bit to District One staff, but I'm going to take a stab at it. Um, uh, those there was a there was a representative group from the task force of uh, those of you that are that are representing more of a neighborhood component. Uh, and, and I'm oversimplifying it because uh, some of you that represent neighborhood components have small businesses or large businesses or et cetera. So it's not one hat only. And then there was another meeting uh, where we had uh, some business, uh, business uh, members, uh, representatives uh, kind of asked the same thing. What's working well? What can we do moving forward? And again, uh, all you business owners, you are you live in neighborhoods or, you know, you you wear multiple hats. So again, not to oversimplify it. But uh, one of the themes was we really wanted to um, figure out a way to formally bring on, you know, some some sound expert expertise. Uh, I know we've asked Don Pitts and RB Blackstone, they've attended a couple meetings, uh, just kind of to see what's going on. They've had some experience, but uh, what we heard, and I think the councilmen and including Councilman Perry, and their staff had heard is, uh, you know, we really think it might be good for this group uh, to bring in some, uh, you know, some, you know, formally bring in some, you know, professional guidance around sound and, and some of the solutions that are out there. Uh, and no matter what side of the discussion you're on. Um, and uh, so we're going to move. Forward. So, uh, you know, I know there's a there's something for sound expert questions on the agenda. I think I just want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, the city staff along with uh, likely the city council members uh, that are engaged. Uh, we're going to work to try to bring, you know, to formally bring on, you know, like a sound expert, you know, someone like that. Um, it might be, you know, certainly, you know, it could be Don, it could be someone like that or RB or something like that. But, you know, I, I don't have the details, but we, I think we clearly heard that, you know, this group would benefit from uh, from that 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 expertise, uh, not just about sound, how to measure sound and this, that, and the other, but really what have been some solutions that have worked in other areas uh, that can help businesses and residents if you're having a house party or something, I guess. But a lot of the discussion was on, you know, how do you how do you get businesses that are trying so hard, and some of them are are just not privy to some of the expertise that's out there. So how do we bring that to to them, and how do we bring that to the educational component to uh, some of the uh, adjacent neighbors and stuff? So, um, so I don't have a lot of details yet about uh, what the process is. There's, the city has procurement processes, right? So we can't I can't just go tomorrow and Right, I sign a contract myself, or the councilman can't by themselves sign a contract with anybody. Um, there's there's procurement processes. We, we started, you know, a little bit on 
what that could look like, what our options are, but we want to do it, but of course, in line with the city regulations on that. So um, that's going to be our really next step. So as we're thinking about anything, whether it is a process improvement or change, you know, for improvement, code potential changes, um, you know, assistance, you know, how do we get expertise to, uh, you know, some areas that maybe are challenged to uh, meet a certain decibel level or whatever. Uh, but that's what we're going to do. So I'm just kind of declaring that as, as I think what we heard as one of the major themes that most of you all shared uh, with us uh, in those settings. Uh, now, I'm going to I'm going to do this. Uh, I mean, was in those meetings, um, some of the council member staff. Am, is, am I missing any of those? Is that the major theme we heard? I think I just want to make sure that we heard that for those of you that were in those meetings, task force members. Uh, does that sound about what, what you heard in some of those meetings, right? Okay. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say that uh, <clears throat> I think it's really important to have a professional who makes everyone comfortable with, one, their track record of having promoted industries as well as promoted you know professionally promoted a safe sound level you know reduced complaints that's a tremendous track record and don pitts is the one who i know of uh, have, have has he, having done that in several markets i know his website will promote him very well because he'll only advertise his success stories but um I feel like San Antonio needs a voice that can help everybody feel like there aren't sides to this. I feel like we're at that point right now. You can you can sense you know the tension within our meetings, and I think it's out there in the street. I've gotten word from some of the neighborhood people that you know it's just there's quote unquote bad blood, and we need a professional to just turn that around. And I feel like. We're not just getting him for expert opinion, but actually to have to help us create the shift that we need as a community. So we're not just having him for his professional advertisement uh, or pro professional services, but for his professional opinion to help steer a sentiment that's out there right now. Yeah, thank you, Martha. And I and I I, I do believe that was shared by many of those that attended those meetings and provided that feedback so many of you all had an opportunity um, to share that and, and certainly i mean we don't want to be you know bashing our heads together for the next month years heaven forbid right um and, and cutting out again and, and yeah and and you know we want to we want to find ways to, to continue to work together and maybe improve some of that because um, I think there are solutions that we all can work on and and I think that's what we're going to be looking for not just someone that knows sound or knows sound ordinances but someone that can help bring a um, facilitation uh, you know that 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 we all can you know um, you know uh, just jump jump on a little bit more and and just hopefully get us moving in the right direction so like i'm the eternal optimist i i think this group will get there <laughs> i just uh i want us to do it as you know i don't want it to be as painful as, as you know any more than it used to be so okay mike i agree with marta uh you know dom pitts does have a great reputation of working with not only businesses and neighborhoods and and crossing that and how do you work together it's not an either or it's just how do we make the best noise ordinance we can the city's growing it's getting denser uh high density everywhere and so yeah i think someone of his skill would be really a great addition thank you Gemma. Yep. Yep, education over citation. I think someone like you know with that expertise will, will certainly help with that. Yeah, that's important. 
Michael, and as I've said from the beginning, you know, I, I feel that these repeat offenders, they truly need to be educated. Um, even the residents, those repeat offenders, they, they just need to be educated. Giving citations is not going to solve anything. And, and that's what I've repeated, I believe, every single meeting. It's not about residents against, against businesses. It's about us working together to find solutions, to educate. You know, when someone, when a person, when an individual is having an issue with their own personal self, they go to rehab, they, they, they get help, they seek help. So, so let's, let's help these repeat offenders. Let's find solutions by working together. Let, let's stop issuing citations. Uh, I, I think people are going through this pandemic has been so difficult on everyone, not just businesses, but the community as well. And uh, I feel that people don't need to be cited over and over again. They, they need to be educated. Um, you know, what, what that, um, constitutes what we'll have to see but but uh but michael thank you to you and your team again for putting all this data together for bringing us together um you know at the end of the day we all have to work together to find solutions i i firmly believe that yeah thank you don and and i and i i think this could be an opportunity if we um you know again i Look, we have to go through the process to get someone, you know, uh, on board. But um, you know, if if there's, you know, if there's some, you know, there's some some that we identify that, you know, maybe we maybe we do a field visit with this this professional out to uh, a locate and and maybe even find some solutions that that and if they work, that could be part of what we what we do moving forward, right? And and. Uh, so I think there's there's some of that out there is, is some of the internal conversations that we're having. I think you're all having the same one. So I think that's going to be our next step. Um, uh, any other questions or comments about that? Um, I, I'll I'll talk a little bit about timeline here in a sec. What that what that could look like. Martha. Yes. What timeline would it uh, take? you know, for us to formally hire someone? Is this, I know you said- uh, Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. A year? Six no, 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 no. I think, I think best case scenario, so it, it's gonna be um, a few weeks, worst case, maybe a little over a month. Um, I have to, you know, I've already started a quick conversation with my finance department about which procurement method uh, this could uh, take form. You know, we're not, the city's not going to spend a gazillion dollars for this professional service assistance, but I have to make sure that um, we go through the proper channels that are, are allowed. You know, there are things that you can do under professional service contracts. There are things you have to do to RFPs and stuff like, you know, like formally bid. And um, so, you know, let me, let me look at that. Um, I, I've done those as director, but done those, but I always work with my finance team to, to figure out which one is the best one to get, you know, someone in fairly quickly, but the best qualified person uh, that, that we think can help. So, but if I was guessing, we're going to be working in uh, February, trying to get that locked up. And we can certainly, you know, keep this group um, updated, uh, but, uh, but that's kind of my goal. Okay. All right. Let's see. I mean, uh, anybody else? Am I missing trying to trying to wave their digital hand? Either that, or I'm paused again. So you you are you are good. I don't see anybody okay. raising their hand. All right. So here's here's what we'll do, everyone. Um, in in the meantime. Um, what I'll probably do, and I'll uh, before we get, we want to get to the community input. I know uh, we we have a couple other things on the agenda, but I think you know for the purposes of moving forward on some of those other items, like what a co what what code changes we should be you know debating about a little bit more and considering. I think it might be more prudent to do that when we formally get 
you know, that uh, that assistance, you know, professor is kind of formalized. Um, so I, I don't want to I don't want to go. Up to the task force members a little bit, and then I'm going to open it up to the community members uh, in the last, uh, you know, 20 minutes or so of the meeting, if anybody wants to weigh in. So task force members, I'm, I'm going to give you a chance to kind of open and freely add anything for the next couple minutes uh, that we may uh, that may be on your mind that we should consider moving forward that that we didn't hit tonight uh, and or um, just want us not to forget moving forward. Martha. OK, I had at the very beginning, I thought about bringing this up and then I thought, oh, we have more important stuff to talk about. But since we have some spare time, I see 110 were unsafe. Way back to your data, I took notes. So when I was looking at your graphs and then we had 126 citations unsafe for. Um, recording, isn't that right? 110 of them were deemed unsafe. This is the total numbers 110 unsafe. I had a question about that one. So, so where? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I thought that was your question, but let me ask your question and then we'll, yeah, we'll find so, the right staff so to answer. Out of the 110 who were unsafe for the measurements to be taken, there is a possibility that there were several more citations if it was indeed safe. Is that right? There's a possibility of that. Yeah, there's a possibility that there was a violation or not a violation, but uh, just remember, uh, as we've discussed, I mean, I mean, safety is paramount for everybody. Whether you're whether you're a PD officer or whether you're a code officer, right? And and whether you're a business owner or a resident, you know, having uh, having a get together uh, or living next to a get together, or et cetera. But there are just some times where it's it, you know code officers aren't peace officers. If we if we uh, respond to an address location and it just seems, you know that's not a good not even for us to get out of the car and take a reading, um, or you know that that's not a good deal. So what we do is we we really just back off and we're tracking that because at the end of this pilot program. We're going to ask ourselves and, and the community is going to ask. Uh, What's what's the best way? No matter what we do on enforcement, no matter what the code ends up being, right? There's going to be some sort of response and or enforcement that the city would likely provide. Um, so we have to see how many of these are maybe not, you know, safe scenarios for a, 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 a not a peace well, officer, what, you know. Right. What I wanted to just say is if it was unsafe to f formally measure it the way we would like to measure it, can they still get a reading from wherever was safe to take for the record? Just because I feel like if it's very unsafe, that could also be part of the effort to not have anybody come and you know measure them. Like it, it might be purposeful. I don't know. I'm just saying, can they just get whatever from wherever is safe? For the record, you know, just have a reading instead of nothing. Yeah. That's just well, awesome. I, I, I don't know, Jenny, or I mean, if you guys want to jump on that, I mean, uh, I'll just share with you this. I mean, if you look at the data, 95% of the time we're able to get a reading, right? It's 100 out of 2000 that we're, we're just, and I've, and I've instructed to and will continue to instruct. And I think this task force, if you were in my shoes, you do the same. When in doubt, back off, right? When in doubt, at 2 a.m., 1 a.m., whatever, back off. And it's not safe, you know, just move on. And and I know it's a noise issue, but it's not, again. But again, most of the time, high most of the time, we can take a reading. But um, I mean, or Jenny, do you want to share anything else that, um, you know, certainly we, we if we can take a safe route, I mean, but uh, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Yeah, let me just jump in real quick and then Jenny definitely can add or subtract. But uh, <clears throat> I went with the team actually this last weekend uh, and I wanted to see it firsthand. Um, luckily, I did not have any of these cases that they're unsafe. But my understanding from the code officer that I was with, uh, I asked some of these questions and his response was, 
most of the time, those cases are single family dwelling unit, and you have a bunch of people in the front yard drinking, screaming, yelling, whatever. So when they pull towards that house and they see that many people, they just keep going. So to get a reading, you have to stop. So if they don't stop in front of the house and they go five, six houses down, potentially, and get the reading, it might be lower than what's there. And now we cannot say they are in compliance because the reading is way too far from where the source of the noise is coming from. So technically, they just keep driving and then they call in PD dispatch and say, this is unsafe for us, send PD out here. So PD is responding to those locations, uh, but we, we are not getting the reading. So, I mean, we can try to attempt to get the reading, but I don't see the benefit of it if we are too far off from that location. But again, Jenny, please jump in as well. No, I, I, think, you, uh, I think you covered the majority of it. I do have one location that stands out in my mind where um, it was a big house party the code officer did show up. The code officer did attempt to take a reading, and the reading was below levels. But there were so many people at that property. Uh, police actually showed up shortly after the officer because continual calls kept coming out. Um, at that time, the police actually issued a disturbance ticket. It wasn't even a noise violation ticket they issued. They issued a disturbance ticket. And we're carrying it within our reports, but it's kind of a good example of you know, something that's tipping, tipping potentially between an actual disturbance and just, just a simple noise violation. So those are kind of, it's a, it's a real thin line. And when we're giving our officers that discretion and, and continuing to, to show that discretion, especially to the residential properties. Um, I have not seen it become as big an issue for the businesses. Um, typically they're all kind of uh, managing their own customers or whatever may be going on uh, with either security or whatever else, but it is the, uh, it's the houses, um, you know, we have some that are in a, a dead end street or some in a cul-de-sac. It just, it doesn't make it safe to really stop anywhere close by where they will get a definitive reading uh, to be able to address the call correctly. So that's definitely something that we've continually discussed with our staff. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to Steve. Steve, you're gonna be the last um, task force member uh, before we open it up to the uh, community members that are joining us tonight. Uh, so, Steve, uh, what do you got for us? I was just going to say that I think I think we should remember it's important that we finish this out in a way that's not just a few lines of code. It, um, I think you know this has to be a solution that works in the future. I mean, we, there's a situation in our neighborhood where someone's asking to rezone something that's already C2 to a specific use of a bar tavern. And there, there's a lot of vacant um, office space over there and, and um, everyone would like to see that filled. But, you know, it, it's things like this that make you resistant to, to what, well, what does that person wanna do? They, they're gonna, are they gonna have live bands you know, outside when, when or because it actually, I think they want it to be a, um, they're calling it a brewery, but, um, or, a, or a gastro pub, that's what it is. Anyway, but I think it's important to solve these, you know, for us moving forward for this to be something that people know will, that that won't be a situation that you can be glad that a business is coming in because there will be a way for this to be straightened out where it it isn't a bother to the neighborhood. All right, thank you, Steve. Um, I'm not gonna dive too much into zoning. Uh, we have a zoning commissioner here. I don't wanna get too deep into that. So, uh, but I, I understand your point. I mean, if we're gonna have uh, uses um, existing and proposed, uh, it's important for this group to think not only short term but long term uh, for whatever we come up with. So that's how I'm taking from that, Steve. Uh, I paraphrase a little bit. Uh, all right, here's what I'm going to do. Um, so task force members, sit back, uh, get your pens out, notebooks, whatever you do. Uh, we're taking notes as well, but 
we certainly want to hear from uh, those of you uh, that uh, are joined us in the community. This is a, about 20 minutes that we, we set aside and we'll go a little longer if we need to. And now, I, I mean, I got here a little late, so I missed kind of the roll call. And I know some people are sitting in as, um, as uh, you know, kind of the alternate for the task force seat. So you might need to help me out a little bit as to who's uh, on the community member. So I, I see the participant list. And I'm going to start there. So let's let's go down the list there. I'm going to call your name out a little bit. Um, I see Bianca. Uh, Bianca, are you on the are you on the chair tonight, or are you a community member? I'm a community member tonight. Thank you. There we go. A woman of many hats. But tonight, uh, do you have anything you want to share or uh, add for the group? I just want to thank everybody for their time and and rolling up their sleeves and doing some of this hard work. I know I've posted some comments in the chat box. I just want to reiterate. I'm thankful that you're going to post this data. I think that that shows transparency, but it's also a feedback mechanism. I think all too often we see people that have called and reached out to SAPD for a concern and never found out what the resolution was in that situation. Um, and I think the feedback mechanism that the data will present to the community will be beneficial to moving, hopefully, the needle forward. And then I also posted a comment about education. Um, just like code compliance educates people to mow their yard and to not park on the front grass, the noise component and the noise ordinance and what are violations um, is a critical element to educate everyone in the city of San Antonio. And I know that there's a lot of concern about repeat offenders and sitting down and having a dialogue with those individuals, I think is critical moving forward. And then also the uh, the apartments that you mentioned, you know, we have a very active apartment association who has not been engaged in this process. And maybe it's an opportunity to bring them to the table to um, obviously talk about these situations that are ongoing. Because um, ultimately, it is a cost to our city's resources and SAPD resources and code resources when people are consistently going to multiple locations, whether it be a density situation, a residential situation, or a business situation. And lastly, I will say that um, I think hiring a sound expert will obviously bring um, examples of what has worked well and what has not worked well in other urban settings across um, either Texas or in the US, and also brings a component of technicality behind it um, to, to make it uh, give you the tools as a, obviously uh, Mike as the Director of Development Services to, to ensure that we bring compliance, whether, you know, through a tiered system of, uh, you know, first, second, you know, warning or, you know, violation one or two. Um, and the whole goal is is not just the stick, but the carrot too. Of course, you know we want everyone to, to, to to come into compliance because it's a quality of life issue. Um, so I'll just leave with those comments and um, thank you. Thank you, Bianca. Um, let's see, um, Colleen. Colleen, no. Um, is, is it Don uh, Pavlin? All right, Don. Um, I don't have anything right now. All right, you've been very active in the chat. Thank you very much. We, we, we've uh, we've got those comments and some of those questions. I think we might answer a couple of them. All right. Uh, um, someone who's FR seventeen four two three is that is that one of us? Who, who's FR seventeen four two three? That's that's, that's my, Felix. That's Felix. Felix. Oh, really? oh, okay. All right. We should make some rules on that. Okay. Uh, Jim Farstein? They'll be here, Michael. Thank you. All right. Thanks for joining us tonight. All right. Um, Parker, are you are you one of the seats tonight or you're a community member? A uh, community member tonight. All right. Parker, I know you joined us in chat a little bit, but uh, do you have anything you want to share with us? Uh, yes. Um, the any the talks about posting names of residents making the calls. Um, I think we can just shut that down. That's a that's an egregious and malicious violation of a victim's right 
to privacy. Um, you don't expose a victim to the accused and risk their safety. Um, so I think any talk of that just need we can just shut down. That, that should not even be addressed as like a actual option. Um, and then as far as the the targeting, um, because we're worried about residents targeting certain businesses. Now, if you're in violation, you're in violation. You know, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know how we're supposed to answer, uh, answer that one. Whenever, uh, if you, let's say you're you're speeding, and the same cop pulls you over three times and gives you a ticket three times, are you being targeted or are you just breaking the law? You're breaking the law, and that's the way it is. Um, I, I understand that there are some neighbors that might call excessively, but if you're not in violation, you're not in violation. And if you are, you are. So I, I'm, I'm not understanding the, the need to try and shut down or expose what are calling in high numbers if business is all indeed in violation. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Parker. Uh, Patricia Reck, do you uh, like to join us? with any comments tonight? All right, Patricia, I, I don't know if you're unmuting yourself or you're just deciding. Um, you don't. You're not required to say anything or add anything, but uh, okay. I'm going to move to RB, RB Blackstone. RB, how are you tonight? You, ha you hung with us. He is actually managing an event he has. He stayed here just, if we need to text him, he would respond. Oh, that's all right. Okay, well, he's just, he's, he's kind of paying attention. I think we've all been victim of that once or twice where we've done a double WebEx meeting or something. That is, that is painful, painful. Um, Mr. Shannon, it's Patricia Reck. Sorry oh, about hey, Patricia. No, 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 not a problem. Thank you. I was trying to unmute, but I'm more familiar with Zoom than WebEx. But um, I want to thank the Noise Task Force for all their work um, and also city employees. I am a city employee myself, and I, I know how hard we work. But um, I am also a resident who is experiencing um, just, you know, the noise disturbance. And I do believe that a solution um, needs to be made as a team, as a group. Um, but it definitely, I agree with Bianca, it is a quality of life issue um, for me and my husband and everyone on our street. So I appreciate everyone's hard work and respective tone with each other and um, I just feel that um, if you're violating the noise ordinance that should stop um, you know just like I'm a citizen who obeys the law but I also get up at 5 30 in the morning to teach school so it would be great if I could get a good night's sleep even on the weekend so um thank you all for your hard work in trying to come up with solutions i appreciate it all right thank you patricia all right uh, is it sarah grace Villarreal? sarah do you have anything you'd like to comment on a question Today, I'm not showing you as muted. I don't hear you. If you're anybody else here, Sarah? No. All right. If you're having some trouble, we'll come back to you. If if or you're just uh, you're, you're you're content, then either way is fine. Uh, we'll go to Scott Huddleston.
I'm Michael. This is Scott Huddleston. Hey, Scott. How are you? You know, Scott, I, I, I heard you a little bit. Now I'm having trouble hearing you. Are you you'd like to share some comments? No, I'm just. You're in and out a little bit, Scott, on me. Uh, well, I'm I'm just here to listen. And, uh, oh, OK. About it. All right. Thank I you. heard you at the end there. I appreciate it, Scott. Thank you. Um, all right, Sarah was it was now cast. Thank you, Sarah. And uh, but uh, she's good, but she didn't know why her sound wasn't working. OK. All right. And Summer. Summer had the hardest. Summer had the hardest day of all. It was fun. <laughs> yes. How are you, Summer? I'm um, great. Thanks so much for um, including me. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm the District 1 Zoning Commissioner. And I asked um, Mike to include me on this, mostly because I would like to understand what's going on. Um, obviously, noise is an issue that gets brought up at zoning. And um, I'm also a D1 resident, and I live close enough to the St. Mary's Strip that, uh, that I, I can even hear the music. And I'm about three quarters of a mile away. Um, so we just want to kind of understand what is going on and um, the issues as well as the work that's going toward finding a workable solution for all of the stakeholders in the community, both on the, and I know we're trying to say, not say that there's sides, but both in the, um, you know, business aspect, as well as the folks who coexist and live around those businesses. Um, and also just wanted to say thank you so much to everybody who's serving on this task force and all the hard work and long hours that you guys are putting into this as well as city staff. So thank you for letting me join. All right, thank you, Summer. All right, I, I think I went through the list of participants, those of you that have hung in with us. Did I miss any uh, community members that uh, wanted to share anything, um, add pride comments or ask any questions? All right. All right, well, um, I don't hear any and I don't see any more comments in the chat. So, um, well, I think, like I said, the, uh, the action we have moving forward, um, you know, we are going uh, uh, to look to, to get the professional services more formally involved helping out the task force. We're going to continue the noise ordinance pilot program uh, with the goal of, you know, trying to just trying to see, you know, what's what's out there, what's working, what the data can can tell us. Um, if there's, you know, I mean, I think there's going to be some good information still coming along there. Uh, we'll work to get uh, that that data uh, uploaded uh, this week, and you know I just I just will you know be you know continue to encourage everybody. I know this is still a difficult situation uh, to find. There's no magic, you know, there's no silver bullet one way to solve this problem or make the improvements that we can all um, you know bring something back to city council that that we know will be better. But uh, but we'll keep working through it. Uh, I do want to thank everybody uh, for for all your time tonight, and and you know stay safe out there. It's going to be cold the next couple of nights from now, I think. So uh, so stay stay warm, stay safe, and and um, I think the next meeting. I mean, we would typically do three weeks out, right? And um, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of propose this. It is what February one. Can we look at maybe? March one, give us kind of the full four weeks. That I, I I just have a feeling we're going to need a good four weeks to get that um, uh, to get that professional services formally done. Um, so that my proposal will be maybe we huddle up an extra week out. Uh, but I'm going to ask the task force. It's, it's up to you if you think that it, that we want to stick with a three week and just maybe look at the data again uh, and anything else you want to talk about or. Uh, Something else. I, I'm I'm open for, um, for that. So any any comments? Any suggestions? I just wanted to say I think four weeks out is good. Mark is going to hand raised. I don't and, know if everybody agrees, but this is a great time. Sorry. 
I was just talking. That March is that four weeks? Four weeks? Yeah, that was four weeks is good. And I'm driving. That's why I turned the video off. Four weeks is good. And this time is the best time for me. <laughs> okay. Um, Six o'clock to seven, eight. I can't attend the two to four, but my alternate might be able to online. But this this okay. is great. This, like an after work work since I'm volunteering. Yeah. And can we do it again? I'm asking. Okay. Um, I was just asking. I, I think, I, I, you know, this is to the group. We had talked about it. Martha's question, can we do six o'clock again? Is that better for everyone? I don't know if it's everyone, but. Are we get? I think we're getting. We can look at the attendance sheets. Are we getting more, you know, better attendance from the task force in the evening meetings than we are the two to fours? Yes. Um, yeah, yes, we I, are. I, I think. I think that's the case. And you know, I think these meetings run really well. Uh, of course, when we have uh, not only more participation of the task force members, um, but even additional community involvement um, in these. You know, is there anybody that that's, that's a really challenge for them? Is if we went to another six o'clock meeting? Yay. It was for me only because I had a church rehearsal, but, you know, a little bit of warning, I'm good. Okay. All right. Thank you, RV. Man of many talents. Two things at once. Um, all right. Let's, let's, let's try to plant this uh, flag in the, in, in the ground. Uh, we'll do March 1, 6 p.m. I, I think March 1 is a Tuesday. Is it a Tuesday? Yes, it is. Okay. March 1, uh, a Tuesday, same bad time, same bad channel. Um, if there's any millennials in the room, you won't know who that is, but I, don't, I mean, you're not a millennial. You, you understand. So you just look like a millennial. I don't want to be a millennial. <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's, let's shoot for March one. Uh, we, now we owe some information. There was, there was real, um, there was some questions I think that we still owe. So we'll get those out to the group, uh, in, in our meeting minutes and maybe just let people know if there's any, you know, some of the specific ones, but we'll work on those as well. So, um, uh, I guess I'll ask it virtual. I mean, if, if the COVID situation is the same as virtual, still good for everybody. Um, you know, I, I, I certainly like an in-person meeting and I know the interaction is a little bit easier to manage, but, um, we're getting to be pretty good at this virtual stuff. So, all right, March one virtual 6 p.m. unless otherwise changed but let's let's just shoot for that does that sound about right yep all right in the meantime if you guys need anything from city staff um or each other just uh, keep working on it but we're here to help uh help answer anything you got okay thanks everybody we just got in under the wire so on time and under budget okay thanks everybody thank you, Thank you. Bye -bye. Have a good evening. Take care. Be Bye. safe.